Good morning guys. I want to take a few minutes this morning to give you a kind of tribute to Steve Jobs. You see Steve Jobs, I mean all of us, was something to this great man. I mean as I'm talking, my video is being recorded on an iPhone. So he had a great impact on almost all of us. That's why the whole world is paying a tribute to this man. We see flowers in front of Apple stores in California and across the United States. We are seeing flowers in an Apple store in Shanghai, in China, and in Bangalore, in India, and London, all over the world. People are paying tribute, and rightly so. I mean, this man is an exact representative of capitalism, what capitalism does to the world. This man being a college dropout believed the power of innovation and added to that hard work. He excelled in his field and he created a company worth $65 billion. That's a great venture, folks. And we are thankful to him for creating that. I mean, in the process, he created thousands, hundreds of thousands of jobs. You remember the article, I Pencil, we read in the economic class that a pencil, a simple pencil, even though it looks simple, it's very complex in its assembly. I mean, the wood, the cedar wood comes from Oregon and refined in Mississippi. And then the rubber, the eraser oil comes from Dutch East Indies colony and it is assembled in China, packaged in some other country, and finally ends up here in the United States. So a simple pencil, he has a global assembly. And how much more about an iPhone or iPad, which is designed in the United States, the parts made in Japan, assembled in China, and come back to the United States and to the rest of the world. So that is capitalism, when people Take an innovative idea and invest in it and then create jobs. That's how capitalism grows. So Steve Jobs is the exact representative of capitalism and free market, the miracle of free market. And I, for, for myself, I came from India with empty hands. I, I didn't have anything. But I went to college here. I studied. I got a good job and paying taxes to the federal government today. So this is possible in a free market, a globalized economy. But Barack Obama, sadly, is the representative of other polarized thinking that is going on. The thinking that is representative of this crowd which is occupying Wall Street in New York City and over 150 cities across the United States, this crowd which says that capitalism is the evil, the greedy corporations are the enemy of the state. There should be more taxes, more government to taking care of the needy people. So you see, Barack Obama, I mean, in contrast to Steve Jobs, Barack Obama did not create even a single job in his life. He was a community organizer, then a first-time senator, and then the president of the United States of America. His plan to create jobs, bring more money from China. Today, the United States has like $16 trillion of debt. And Barack Obama brought more debt than the previous all presidents combined. Believe that. From George Washington to George, H. George W. Bush, they bought the debt. Barack Obama alone bought more debt than all of them combined. So how much debt he is creating? And Barack Obama's plan is to take the money from the rich people and use that money to create jobs. That's exactly how socialism works. A politician who had no experience in free market takes the money from the rich people and he says, I will create jobs. And Solindra is the exact representation of that kind of thinking. And Solindra, it started a few miles from where Steve Jobs started his business. How did Solindra end up? Solinda took like a half trillion dollars of federal money and it went bankrupt. 
because it doesn't have an innovative mind it doesn't have what it takes to compete in the globalized world because it has that big line to US Treasury and Solyndra is bankrupt with half trillion dollars of federal money it's bankrupt that is how socialism works government takes money from the people give it to its cronies and those cronies they work on their projects they bankrupt it they take more money from the government they bankrupt it and they will never actually go bankrupt because there will be that big chain that umbilical cord to suck more blood from the treasury that is born out of taxpayers so you see folks steve jobs represents the thinking of capitalism and barack obama represents socialism and they are opposite to each other and america has to decide whom to follow and also the success of steve jobs is possible only in a free society see this is a man i mean even think about his nature his success would not have been possible in an islamic society because it takes individualism to succeed in a free market this man who was uh, uh, raised in a lutheran home a christian home converted to buddhism he would have been killed as an apostate by death penalty in any islamic society think of that in a free market like united states he could actually start his business and follow whatever religion he wants to follow that's what comes from freedom you can do your own economic freedom you can pursue your dreams in economic scale you can also have religious liberty no matter what religion you are born into you can follow a religion you want to and i am following christianity now which is antithetical to indian culture i mean which is foreign to indian culture but nobody wants to kill me because i am living in a free society like india or the united states of america so freedom brings us all these things and economic freedom is a product of religious freedom religious freedom is very very important and martin luther said i want to follow my conscience it's not about who is right here pope or martin luther but i want to follow my freedom that is protestant christianity was born that is when the capitalism could flourish so you see folks uh, uh, religious freedom is very 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 important and steve jobs is the case to that and barack obama is going exactly opposite to that and the crowd the hippie drug infested crowd in new york city who are saying take more money from the government it doesn't work folks it takes hard work and innovation to succeed in life if government takes over there will be more food stamps i mean you see like today like 50 million americans are living off food stamps they are being told this big lie you are entitled 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 so government is saying to half of americans you are you have an obligation to pay more and to the other half it is saying you are entitled and it is creating this large subclass of dependents and that is only growing the poverty is growing so socialism comes with these bombastic claims of compassion but it spreads misery capitalism even though it looks heartless in the beginning but if you exercise it rightly it creates wealth and people can work and take from that wealth created by capitalism that's how the prosperity comes and that's how it is coming now that's how it is coming in china and in india see in india where i come from millions of people are getting jobs today because we left socialism and we are following free market capitalism same, same with china china lifting millions of people out of poverty because it has embraced the capitalism it left that mao's socialist communist agenda and the irony of 21st century is the wealth created by capitalism in china is squandered by american politicians for socialist projects they are coming up with here in the united states of america perhaps that's the greatest irony of 21st century but however my point is steve jobs represents a thinking that is very very essential that we need it today
This is Geronomy. Remember, Jesus is the Lord and Geronomy is spokesman. See you later.